and welcome back to the 6-5 Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners here at Futurum Research. And on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're so glad to have you. In this spotlight session, Futurum's Daniel Newman sits down with Sarah Peach, the Senior Director of New Product Innovation of Samsung Semiconductor, to, to discuss the ever-evolving trends of the storage space and how high-performance compute power is empowering organizations to extract valuable, actionable insight at the device level. That's pretty cool. This is going to be a great conversation. Let's go have a listen. We want to thank Accenture for sponsoring the Semiconductor Track, of this year's 6-5 Summit. Sarah Peach, Samsung Semiconductor, welcome to the 2022 6-5 Summit. Great to have you here. Thank you, Daniel. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great. I love talking about data. I think this is one of the topics that just about every enterprise organization, institution has front and center. Uh, it's basically going to drive the future of our businesses, of our world. And so talking to people like yourself that are, you know, leading product and innovation at companies, it's, it's fascinating to me. So first and foremost, um, you know, the processing, the speed of data, it's happening so fast. Um, you know, the way we handle data is going to be the difference between sort of the, the haves and the have nots. Give me some trends that you're seeing right now in the storage and, and in the data space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the trends are basically more, more and more. Uh, we're seeing more data volume. We keep generating here as humans, we keep generating more and more data. Um, by 2025, we're expecting 400 exabytes of data each day, which is a phenomenal volume. And uh, that's both a, an, an opportunity and a challenge for our customers, you know, figuring out how to deal with those massive quantities of data and extracting value from it. We're also seeing data created in new locations, right, from traditionally enterprise and, and more recently cloud, and now IoT, through edge uh, data generation, right? It's moved from industrial and consumer devices into, for example, cars, autonomous driving. That's another, that's terabytes per vehicle per day that you're seeing there. So new locations uh, for data generation. And we're also seeing more data intensive applications like uh, AI and ML that require huge amounts of, of storage and memory. So it's really yeah, more, more and more. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. So if I'm hearing you, and I, I think this definitely matches up with my research is pretty much everything that we're doing is generating volumes of data that are exponential compared to what we were dealing with in the past. And of course, in order to get things like AI and ML right, to get autonomous driving, to get maximum productivity from applications, it means we need all that data to be accessible for, for tra training, for learning, for intelligence and for insights. What are the challenges that you see being created through all this volume of data? Well, you, you're absolutely right. The challenge is sort of using using that data, right? As it grows, the the hard the, the larger the data gets, the harder it is to move it around, right? There's this concept of data gravity, right? That the data weighs something is heavy and difficult to move around, and that's absolutely true, right? As your data grows, it becomes more costly to move it um, from one location to another or from storage into compute. It takes longer to move. So that slows everything down. You need more bandwidth. And it also takes more power, literally more energy <laughs> to move, move bits from one location to another. So these are, these are really um, challenges that you deal with when you start to get these very large data volumes. So when I speak to, to people in roles like yours, you know, one of the things that I always look for is, you know, you're talking to these customers I've been to the Samsung Semiconductor Tech Days. I've seen the ecosystem, the partners, customers, users of your technology. How are you in terms of in the innovation, in the new products that you're building and developing, how are you solving these problems? I think that has to be top of mind in every conversation that you're having right now. Yeah, absolutely right. I think we see, our customers are seeing these limitations of existing compute architectures and, and looking for solutions. You know, how, how are we going to, Handle, handle these large data volumes more efficiently. And 
we're taking, I'm from the sem Samsung semiconductor business, so that's memory and storage. And so we're taking a memory and storage focused look at how we can help customers. And uh, one way in which we're approaching this is figuring out how we can do more within memory or within storage. So how can we add functionality to our memory or storage devices that will help our customers deal with large uh, volumes of data? And one way in which we're approaching that is adding processing power to our storage and, and our memory devices. So we've been doing that both in memory uh, with acceleration DIMM. So we're, we're adding logic to DRAM modules in memory. Also high bandwidth memory. We have processing in, in memory that provides AI acceleration. So that's on the memory side. And then on the storage side, we're adding compute into solid state drives. That's our smart SSD computational storage drive. And both of these approaches uh, are really giving our customers more options for working with their data, right? More options for accelerating uh, results from that data, more options for optimizing their workflows to get more out of their data. We're definitely seeing a uh, continued pressure on, on memory technology to keep up with the number of cores, the amount of compute, right? And everybody knows that all the cores in the world without memory are pretty much useless. So, you know, there's this tug of war between compute and memory. You're seeing different fabrics and technologies being introduced. To, how do you plug in more memory? Well, while most parts are, of the stack are composable, um, memory is, is, presents a number of different challenges. You know, I think what you mentioned with computational storage is interesting. Um, talk a little bit about how that's changing the C, you know, the compute paradigm. Right. Yeah. Just uh, I think computational storage is a way to bring is bringing high performance compute to traditional storage devices. So what that means is that you can process data and analyze it directly on the drive where it's stored. You don't have to pull that data from storage into memory into the CPU of your system, right, in order to get some insight from it. This is not actually a new idea. It's been around for a long time, but all of this, this, this growth of data is really making it more valuable, right? Now people are realizing, gosh, you know, we, we have too much data to be able to shove it all into the, to the CPU complex. And uh, so what's new is that there is availability of devices, right? So, so some practical hardware uh, that now supports computational storage. We launched ours in January of last year, 2021. And so we're we've been learning since then about you know, what are the best applications? What are the true benefits of uh, allowing processing in storage? What are, what are you finding? I mean, what are those benefits? Mostly the benefits are what I would say TCO driven, right? What our customers are looking for is lower total cost of ownership. And computational storage helps them in a couple of different ways, right? Um, it means faster time to insight, right? If you are processing data where it's, where it's stored, you can get results faster. So if you're a data analyst, right, you, you're running more queries, you're getting those query results faster. Um, it's also more efficient and overall reduces the load that you have on your other compute, your main compute. So you can either save on main compute, not buy such an expensive server, or you can use that freed up main compute for other, other applications. So it's uh, really an overall improved application performance and better use of your infrastructure. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, one of the ways that I always um, sort of look at a technology, whether it's brand new or it's been in the market a while, is sort of the ecosystem, right? How well adopted is it? Um, as I mentioned, you know, you're very embedded in an ecosystem because, you know, memory technology, storage technology, compute technology, networking, all the fabrics that enable us to do anything from high performance computing um, all the way down to just every day sort of things on our mobile devices all requires these things to interact uh, you know, efficiently and effectively. Um, so as it relates to computational storage, you know, is this being adopted? Uh, who's using this? How fast is it being rolled out? Where is it being picked up in the market, Sarah? Okay, well, that's a, a great question. Let me just comment on your ecosystem point because that's, that's a very, very key point. As I mentioned at the beginning, 
we at Samsung were adding functionality to memory and storage. And that means that it's no longer such a simple, straightforward, uh, straightforward product that we're offering, right? So we're actually working much more closely with ecosystem partners to, to bring these types of products to market, right? Software partners, hardware partners, uh, channel partners, even standards bodies, right, are all in the mix to get products like this out, out to the market and make sure that they're useful and usable uh, by customers. So, so you're absolutely right. The ecosystem is, is key in these types of, uh, for these types of products. Regarding computational storage and where it is in the market at the moment, we're still definitely early stages in the market for computational storage, right? Um, uh, customers are becoming more aware, both across the OEMs, across hyperscalers, more aware of what's possible uh, with computational storage. There's some venture funding, startups active in the market, um, new applications emerging all the time, but it's a very dynamic situation. So I think we're, we're in the, the thin end of the wedge here with computational storage and, and plenty of room for growth. Yeah, I, I think that um, seeing that adoption and seeing more and more of the, the market starting to you know embed this technology, um, to include this technology is going to be the, the, the validation. And so you're already starting to see it. It sounds like there's a lot of interest right now as we're trying to solve problems everywhere from, you know, supply chain to, you know, to technology refreshes, to digital transformation, to hybrid work, all these things that are going on concurrently. Basically compute is an underpinning of all of it. And so I look at, you know, and when I say compute, it's everything in that entire ecosystem of compute. So it'll be good to watch sort of how this computational storage picks up, gains momentum, gets more market coverage. Cause it's, like I said, it doesn't sound like it's, it, it's, it's new. It sounds like it's one of these things that's going to dramatically improve things that are all, you know, it's a, it's both innovative and iterative in terms of helping move things forward. Um, so with that in mind, you know, what about specific applications? Like where would you tell users that are looking at this and saying, okay, where does this fit into our strategic utilization of resources? Where does computational storage fit in? What are some of those best killer applications for the technology? Right. So at a very high level, I would say computational storage is great if you are looking for things in very large data sets. So at the, at the highest level, that's basically what computational con storage can do really, really well. Right. If, if you've got a huge data set, you know there's some gold in there um, and uh, computational storage is going to allow you to find that gold very quickly and then do analytics later in more detail just on the good stuff. So dramatically faster search through large volumes of data. What does that mean in terms of actual applications? Database acceleration is a great example. Um, filtering, uh, scanning and filtering through databases just to focus on the, 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 the subset of data that's particularly relevant for your analysis. That's a great use case for computational storage. And uh, a second use case that I particularly love is uh, cybersecurity. One key aspect of cybersecurity is searching through log and event data. Um, so that's a critical part of, 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 preserve, of protecting uh, your, your, cyber, your infrastructure. But as data grows, the tools for ingesting this log data, this event data, and scanning through the data don't really scale very well. Tools like Splunk, for example. And using computational storage means that you can continue to use these tools these uh, um, software tools with much, much faster results, even as your data scales up. So um, cyber is a, definitely a good example of a situation where you are looking for tiny things in large data sets and where time matters, right? Uh, if you can search, for example, a search that would take half a day or a day is now taking 25 minutes with computational storage. That means you are finding these breaches faster, which means you're resolving, remediating those breaches faster, which means the overall cost of that breach is going to be substantially lower. So I think that's a that's a great um, application uh, of computational storage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I love anything that moves cybersecurity forward. When you just see the volumes of attempted breaches and the impact that it's having right now on on businesses, companies, it's like you're always playing defense. And so yeah. any technology that speeds that up, and you mentioned Splunk, who also spoke here at this event. 
you know, it's definitely something that they're focused on. You guys also have other partners that you are, you know, working closely with. Um, AMD uh, joined us here in Xilinx. Uh, you know, FPGAs are, are red hot right now as well. Um, I understand that there is a bit of a partnership brewing there with Samsung Absolutely. and Xilinx. More than, more than brewing, it's well established. Yes, yes. So Talk we've about been working that. Tell me about how you two are working, how the two organizations are working together. Yeah, so we've been working very, very closely with Xilinx, now now AMD, um, right from the, from the beginning uh, and through the launch of this product. The compute component in our solid state, in our smart SSD is a Xilinx FPGA. And so this has been a joint go-to-market I mentioned ecosystem earlier. You did too, right? Um, they're an absolute critical partner for us in in getting the product out. If you want to buy a smart SSD, go, go please please go to Xilinx uh, for that. And uh, what it's been a great is a combination of Samsung and AMD's experience, right? AMD obviously, well, previously Xilinx, uh, really understanding the the acceleration market. And Samsung really understanding, of course, the the storage market, and the, so a combination of those two, um, those two views is really valuable. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So as we kind of come to time here on this uh, this conversation, I always like to get a little bit of a you know look into the future through the lens of those you know developing, building, accelerating, and innovating. So. You know, what do you see as the future? How does comp how does computational storage go forward? Are there other applications that you see driving here? What's uh, what's next for this technology? Right. Well, I'd love to see more applications in AI and ML. That's obviously a, a massive market, and I think where computational storage can really uh, help customers. Also, edge applications, computational storage is effectively a whole system in a box, right? Storage, memory, and compute in, in one small form factor. So I think there's plenty of room for growth there. And I'd also love to see, since we're early in the market, I love to see computational storage instances, instances available in the public cloud because I think we're at a stage where we need to see how people are going to use this. We've identified a couple of great use cases, but there are many, many more that we're not aware of. And so I think just general availability of computational storage is, is really going to help uh, to uh, get the word out and, and folks to really understand how best they can use that uh, to help them in their business. Yeah, I, I, Sarah, I really appreciate you joining here. You know, if I could summate a lot of this, it's bringing compute and storage closer together is a huge opportunity. And with the you know, exponential data scale that we we're all seeing happen. The only way that organizations are going to be able to utilize all that data is by enabling it <laughs> to be accessed more seamlessly, more rapidly. So it's getting rid of that latency as much as possible. It's getting, you know, the two working harmoniously. And and it's people like you that are involved in, you know, developing, building, and rolling out those solutions. And uh, I really enjoyed having you here today to talk about this. Um, thanks, thanks, Daniel, for the opportunity. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk more about this soon. And thank you so much, Sarah, for joining me here at this year's Six Five Summit.